Okay. For all of us, because this is an everyone thing, because we all have feet and they all get a little uh, kind of screwed in the end, even though they support a lot of what we do, pretty much everything we do, uh, we don't use them properly. And it takes a little bit of time to understand like what it feels like to have that full foot on the floor, depending on if you are internally rotated, typically, or externally rotated, typically. Um, the one side of the foot is more apt to get all the pressure, all the intensity um, of your weight, right? And so once that starts to happen, then the ankle is now getting overstretched, right? The Achilles is kind of coming out of line. The calf is being activated in a different way. The knee starts to hurt. It all goes up. So feet, spine, uh, shoulders, and I know those are like common places to feel tense and feel things going on but those are usually or just alignment of the spine places that injuries or just something that we're feeling that's not right is coming from but i always and encourage everyone else to as well look at the feet first and foremost and when you're standing so if you want to try this out right now if you haven't done it on your own or we haven't done it together you want to stand and squat almost like you're sitting in a chair see if this kind of happens or this kind of happens or if the knee is one way beyond the foot um, side to side or even forward and back right that's an immediate uh i guess just sign that something's off center something's off alignment so all of our toes everything that's attached underneath all goes up here right and it rides up so we want to use this it's gonna help in things like uh, weightlifting in running and walking in our anatomical just structure and well-being um, so we're gonna really dig into the feet but I did a yoga video for toes feet last week definitely go check that out if you want more stretches this is super important when you have the external or internal rotation. You're gonna take a mini band, and again, you can use whatever you have uh, that's available to you that can almost create a loop and you can hold resistance on. So you're gonna wrap this right around the middle of the foot, right where the arch is. And then from here, you can pull to one side if you want to. Sometimes I like to even use my other foot. The one thing you wanna be careful of here is that you're not pulling it that way or whatever way you're going, right? So I'm working my right foot right now and I am pretending that I have internal rotation usually. So both toes facing in towards each other. What I wanna work is this side of my ankle and of my foot. So I'm gonna find that resistance here and then it's probably not gonna be much movement. It's not the leg rotating just yet. We wanna, we wanna work that too, but right now we're focusing on the foot, the ankle. So you're gonna wing this foot to the side, pull, and try not to let it snap back in. And when you come in, you want to avoid that happening. So pulling out to the side, really squeeze this little, this part of your ankle right here where we're engaging all of these muscles and we're strengthening this side of our foot. So side coming right back to toes pointing towards the ceiling rather than over rotating the other way. If you're the opposite, we are pulling inward. So I had to think about that. You could hold it or hook it onto something. You can even hold it back here. It's still gonna create some resistance. We're gonna go the other way though. So instead of pulling out, we're pulling in with that ankle, coming back to where we came from. This is gonna be a little more doable, not as challenging when you have the band like I am. It also depends on the resistance. This is a super light band. Um, so I recommend anything you can hook it on, on this side. Uh, another great exercise for the ankles. And again, keeping them in line. So toes to the ceiling and then trying to, I know this is a challenging thing to do to get straight knees and lift the heels off the floor, but a great way to practice that is even with a band or a strap, or your hands pulling your toes back and trying to, instead of reach your head or your nose to your knee, you wanna to try to create the back of the knee pressing into the floor and the heel lifting up here. So it's a great way to gain mobility and get that uh, straight feeling 
behind your leg and get all of that range of motion going because it can get really tight and really bound behind the knee area. Especially if there's issues already going on, on top of it, you, you can probably feel behind the knee and all of that like puffiness and it's bound to happen, right? But, but we're working on it. So you're gonna bring the band right here and you're gonna press it forward. You don't have to worry about the toes yet. So you don't have to even find that full extension of the toes here. If you want to, go for it. Sorry if you hear <laughs> my cracking feet. That's uh, the aftermath of dancing your whole life. You just get to crack everywhere you go. I've been places before where they're like, yeah, no, that's not normal. I'm like, I know. Thank you, but we're building strength, right? Um, it's just a lot of overuse of the feet, incorrectly or correctly. So we're getting there. We wanna give some love to the feet always. Uh, just thinking about how much they do throughout the day. Always trying to like massage, uh, get some circulation going, bringing your feet above your torso. So putting your legs up against the wall and letting them hang there for about 90 seconds to three minutes. All good things, but especially if the internal, external over rotation is happening, Try to do this at least three times a week of about 10 reps of those exercises. Uh, give yourself like 30 seconds or so in between and go for three rounds and commit to that and see how you're starting to feel things differently underneath you and how it just continues to build. 